What up, dudes? Back with another patch note video. We are releasing War on the Plague Lands 24, patch 1.16. We have a bunch of new abilities, heroes, everything. Um, I have decided to include some of the changes that will be in 1.2 in the current version. So it's kind of a minor patch. There are quite a few things that may not make the final cut. So without further ado, make sure to hit that subscribe button check out the discord check out my twitch i'll be streaming later so uh cheers so this video is going to be a little bit different than previous patch note videos because i'm going to go through all of this in one take it's not going to be as polished but i will still try to get through everything as concisely and quickly as possible so to begin um i'm going to go through changes detail them, show which heroes have what, and then I'm going to demonstrate the changes and show what the new abilities do, what it looks like, etc. So to start, the first new ability that we have on Marjan, Ashbringer Tyrion, not regular Tyrion, and Sally Whitemane is Cataclysmic Light, which is a single wave rain of fire derivative which deals a lot of damage in a small AOE on a reasonable cooldown and to compensate for Sally losing her divine punishment which is the stun the range stun Renault now has divine punishment in place of his shockwave so the next ability that we have introduced is called Arcane Multi-Shot. It is a pretty standard multi-shot ability and it is the attribute bonus for Sally, Valraw, Fairbanks, and Dark Master Gamma. Next we have a dark version of Flame Strike on Cormac, Ferlina, and Maleki. Um, the values for this flame strike are identical to Isolin's. However, it's tooltips wrong. It is a it is on a longer cooldown. The cooldown is 25 seconds, deceivingly. Um, next up, we have an ability called Swift Strike on Putridis, Abendis, Herod, and some more people. Um, this ability is a single target minor nuke in melee range and it's on a pretty low cooldown pretty low mana cost it's meant to be like a storm bolt firebolt type damage but without the stun it actually has a mini stun so it can interrupt things next we have the ultimate version of swift strike called devastating blow and it's on leonid and i think maybe Ramstein or someone else and it does a lot more damage it does 700 but it's an ultimate so um finally for our single hero changes Marlene Red Path is mounted so she's a little faster nothing else has changed about her and Vectus has the first sleep in the game uh, 2 seconds, 3 seconds, 4 seconds for heroes, and 10 seconds for units on 20 second cooldown. So it can, it's like a light stun since it can be interrupted by abilities. Now, time to show off some of that stuff. So, to start, let's do Putridis's Swift Strike. Um, as you can see, we're going to draw him out. Drew everyone out. Oh, you can still see the damage. And let's get this guy to just start tanking shit. Let's show off Leonid's devastating blow first. So we'll just see some massive damage on this guy. Whoop. And let's show off some of the damage abilities. So Cane multi shot looks like this. Cataclysmic light. Ooh. And 
the dark version of Flame Strike. Very fancy. So, we have a couple new heroes. We have a couple switch ups. Um, we'll go through white first, the uh, Barov, Barov family. Um, Weldon Barov now starts undead, and he has some ability changes. His Thunderclap is replaced with Stomp Shadow Fury and his Stormbolt with a Death Coil. So he mirrors Harthal pretty uh, pretty directly. And Alexei Barov has a whole new, whole new kit, mostly new kit. He has Swift Strike. Uh, his Impale is on Q, Alt, and, uh, and Attribute are the same. And he has this new Immolation that we're trying out, non-Aura E abilities. So the immolation is not intended to be very strong, but it also does not cost very much mana. So it's just to give him some minor wave clear uh, to clarify the damage is at max oops, nine per second draining eight mana. So we're gonna we're gonna tweak that around. Um, next up, we'll go through turquoise's changes. Um, Tur Weldon. Rest in peace, Weldon, since he starts undead, is getting replaced with Ormon of Stromgard. Might have butchered that. Another champion from the um, from the halls in the Scarlet Monastery. And he's designed to be a pretty powerful tank. Um, he has Defiant Taunt as an innate. He has a second innate, Halbin's Blessing, which is the Chitinous Bulwark or whatever that ability is called on the Crypt Lord in melee. So he gets bonus armor and like minor thorns. And he has a pretty interesting kit. Holy Light, Holy Nova, a new ability called Blessing of the Crusade, which is just a self-target anti-magic shield. You can't use it on anyone else. Uh, pretty standard avatar ability and the tooltip is wrong, but his attribute bonus gives two of each stat per level, and uh, it doesn't show up. It's 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 hidden. And Valea has had her fan of knives returned, and her stealth is on an innate now, and it's on a lo longer cooldown and all that. So she should have a little more burst. So let's show these guys off a little bit. Um, you know, she can kind of go stealth and actually do some burst DPS. And this guy basically gets armor out to his A. He gets this self um, spell shield, and he can get pretty big. Might, you probably are going to want to work with that. Uh, his collision size is a little bigger than other heroes so he's just meant to be like a tank um, you know. so next up let's look at two new brawler heroes one of them isn't so new um, the Ravinian Ravinian butchered that uh, is now a hero and uh, he's a pretty pretty simple hero it's death coil and rage cleave and he has the new Devastating Blow as an ultimate, as well as Juggernaut as his attribute. So Pink gets a whole new melee hero. And Zaldare the Outcast has been converted to a melee hero. He has a far more powerful kit than the old Zaldare. Death Coil, um, this new optimized version of Bladestorm that was on Loric called Flurry, Bloodlust, and force wave and uh, this is going to be changed to troll mojo so show off the oops animation for that real quick looks pretty cool next up we have some pretty big changes to blue um tail and floor is now 
a lot more valuable. Hopefully people won't be suiciding him. He has Holy Grasp, Vishaz's Q, replacing his Holy Light. His Stomp is replaced by a less powerful version of Alex. Alex's Blinding Knight, ah, Blinding Light. It's like a mini stun and a blind. And then his Lay on Hands is replaced with Champion of the Light, which is pretty strong ability. Let's just grab all that. One of these guys. Um, so to compensate in the West, Vishaz has been nerfed. He lost his Holy Grasp and has been replaced with the Holy Smite. But he gets a new item, and hopefully the buffs to Sally White Mane and Renault will make up for that. Finally, Galvar's Stormbolt has been replaced with a Holy Light to compensate for Talon losing losing his Holy Might, ah, Holy Light, and to just prevent like chain stunning and all that fun stuff. So. Talon should be pretty strong now. And we have a new hero for yellow. If Talon gets level 12 and Tyrion arrives for blue, we have Etreg, Tyrion's longtime pal. That's his, that's his name. Etreg is a... Where did he go? Bruiser hero. He's actually pretty strong. Stormbolt, Swift Strike, Bloodlust, Bladestorm. And the idea here is to still give yellow um, a lesser version of Tyrion. Like, I feel like yellow is kind of like relies on, or like, it's really fun to get Tyrion. As when playing yellow, you get like this new tank, he's he's super strong, you know, all this stuff, but if blue actually plays well, then you never get to see him. And E Trig is intended to be just sort of a little bit of a compensation. So next up, uh Teal has been considerably buffed, and Bridget Abendis now starts um, let's just kill off regular Bendis real quick. Bridget Bendis now starts off in the game. So, same toolkit. Same skill set. And Valdemar has been moved from uh, the towers to Teal. So, Valdemar is now, we're just suiciding him. Valdemar is now Teal's backup for a Bendis dying. Boom, boom. And he's had a slight buff. So Divine Light is... His Holy Light is replaced with the Divine Light, which is like a little more powerful. So that should make Teal a little more a little, little more fun to play in the beginning and kind of be able to like actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Light Blue. Um, and on to changes to the towers. Um, so the towers have lost... Valdemar, and he's been replaced with Leopold, who now starts at this bottom tower. And Leopold has the same abilities. And the towers get a new hero as the replacement for Leopold upon getting any hero to level 12. Argandon Officer Garrosh. Garrosh. Not quite Garrosh. butchered it um but he's a orc of the argent dawn divine punishment the impale swift strike endurance aura blade storm lights grace and he comes in at level eight um finally just to show off um we'd been experimenting with a non-ultimate version of blade storm which has been renamed flurry on Loric, and um, this is the optimized version so far. So rather than the ability going on for, you know, four or five seconds, it just goes on for one second and deals a lot of damage. 
in a small period of time. So hopefully that will make a bit of a splash. And um, finally, we're about at the end here. We have a new hero, not quite, not, not quite new, a returning hero for light blue as a backup for Quartz Crossing Dying, Headmush the Rotting. He comes with a couple units, 12 exactly. Uh, Headmush the Rotting was deprecated from the 12 player, and he's not super exciting. His Death Coil, so Strike, Commandora, and Rage. Bone Armor, and yeah, there's some other small changes. Um, throughout the patch. So, for instance, uh, Scout Cigarettes for Scourge, now properly detect invisible units. Uh, just some various tool tips, some new items. The game is now set to daytime all the time. So, just trying out a bunch of different things. And for the most part, this is just testing out some of the new features that will be in 1.2. So about every two weeks, I'll be releasing a kind of mini patch. So in two weeks, we'll have 1.17. That includes just some of the changes that will be included in 1.2. Not all of them will stay. Um, just wanted to show off some of the cool things that I've done that may be on different heroes for the finished product. And... Um, Yeah, thank you for watching. If you enjoy the video, if you enjoy the patch, if you enjoy War in the Plaguelands, please drop a follow on Twitch, subscribe to the YouTube, show up in the comments section, head over to the Discord, check out my Patreon, etc. Much appreciated, much love. I uh, will see you guys in game. What up, dudes? Back for another patch. What up dudes? Back with another back with another drop a subscribe. Hmm. Let's just try.